Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week seven, <clears throat> excuse me, of ENC, ENG. Sorry, my brain's not working yet this morning. It's Monday. I haven't had nearly enough coffee yet. Uh, ENG 107. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on this week and um, get you moving in a good direction. So <clears throat> last week we talked about um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And kind of the opposite side of that is when we use inappropriate language um, or overly biased uh, thought and communication. So we're gonna talk about that this week more specifically, the power of bias and language. You're going to be analyzing a short reading um, and talking about bias. We're going to be thinking about grammar and how we can apply that. Um, and also even the strategies that some, uh, a documentation system like APA helps us do when we're writing for college. In terms of activities, of course, as usual, you're going to have some readings and resources to look at. You're going to write a short paper and you're going to have a journal this week. So no discussion board this week, two assignments though. One is a writing activity and one is a journal. So for the articles, websites, and videos, these are, of course, as usual, provided right here where you can find them fairly easily. Um, make sure that you read each article and view each video before you start working on the graded assignments. Um, I noticed that a couple of folks have already been posting things. Um, oh, there, I'm sorry, there is a discussion board this week. Um, I thought that was unusual. It's just the way it looked at the top. It was seeming like there wasn't one. Um, but I noticed a couple of folks have already been posting some of the unit seven assignments. I cannot stress enough how important it is to do the readings and resources and watch all the videos and including my own video before you start doing the work. Um, I want you to get your points. I want you to get the maximum points and the units don't even open until Sunday. So it worries me when I see things posted bright and early on a Monday morning. So um, if you need to redo something, please let me know uh, if you've already turned something in that you rethink after you think a little bit more about what needs to be done. So a couple of readings, three videos, make sure you read and view all of those. As usual, there is a practice. So you click on here, you click on the units, uh, the little modules within that practice and complete that before, again, before moving on to the, the actual graded assignments. So we really have three things to do this week. First one is a discussion board, an unconscious bias. And here's what you're gonna focus on. Um, bias in language can sometimes happen because people are not considering the language they use or they may not be aware of their own unconscious bias. Have you ever encountered an unconscious bias? How have you addressed it? What do you think people can do to avoid it? Finally, what is one question about this unit's material that you have for the class? And then in your peer responses, answer the questions posed by your classmates and share your responses to their own stories of unconscious bias. This is an important kind of caveat. For this discussion, please make sure that you keep in mind that whatever example of an unconscious bias you share should still be appropriate to mention on this discussion board. Um, use appropriate language, use appropriate um, thought about bias. I will give you a couple of examples um, that I hear a lot. And these might be good places for you to to start thinking about it. One is the use of the term policeman. Uh, I was born in the late 1960s and I can remember as a child in the early seventies, we were told over and over and over again to stop using the term policeman because there are definitely police officers who are not men. But here we are 54 years later, people still say policeman. They still say mailman. Uh, things like that display an unconscious bias. So think about those kinds of terms. Maybe those are some good places for you to start. Policeman, fireman, mailman. What's another one that I hear a lot? Um, those are the biggies. 
and they really should have been gone back in like 1974. So I, I don't know why we still use them. I don't get it, but uh, they definitely don't have a spot in professional objective writing like we do for college. So got to be careful about those kinds of things. So think about that. That might be a good place to, to get you started. Then we have a short paper um, on diversity and inclusion, and this is your assignment sheet as always. This is, the, this is the one that I always talk about that you need to really dig into and make sure that you do it. I am going to go ahead and read it to you this time because a lot of times I say you should read it yourself and then people miss some things. So let's just go over it. Um, in the previous unit, you considered a writer's position on diversity, equity, and inclusion within their workplace. Now you will explore your own ideas surrounding diversity, equity, and inclusion to create a short paper on the subjects. Review the articles in this unit's readings and resources and select one of them. You only have to pick one uh, to use in your short paper. Create a short paper of three paragraphs that answers the questions below. Your answer to each question should be one paragraph in length that is at least six sentences long. You do not need to include the question. You should write this in paragraph form, so not numbered, right? In the first paragraph, explain how you define diversity, equity, and inclusion, which we've already talked about last week, so um, you can use some of those same ideas. What do these terms mean to you and why would you consider to, them to be important? In the second paragraph, what do you view to be the most important strategy to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion? So write a body paragraph that includes evidence from one of the articles. Select one article from this week's reading. Use a quote from the article to support your answer to the above question. When you use a quote, you should introduce the quote and then use quotation marks to show it. And then after the quote, you will have what we call an in-text citation, which will be the author's last name, the year, and the page number, if that's available. If you use the article from Salem Press Encyclopedia, because that one doesn't have an author, you will include this as your in-text citation. It will be the title, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, 2021 and then it doesn't have page numbers but you would use the paragraph numbers so that's why it says para period and then a number um that's because there's no author paragraph three end the paper by answering this question how do you think bias in language affects your views on diversity and inclusion and then you will have a reference page you're only going to have one thing on it um, but it will be the last page of the assignment <clears throat> and you will use the reference from the article you selected um, and put that on that final page. It'll have references at the top of it, and then the reference will go right below it. And I'm going to show you how to set that up and, and give you a template for it. So requirements, submit a Word document in APA format that has a title page. We did that back in unit three. It is double spaced, it will have one inch margins and it will use an APA recommended font. Typically Times New Roman in 12 point is what you wanna use. Include a reference page also in APA format for the selected article and I'm gonna help you with that. Three paragraphs following the above directions and in that second paragraph, you have to have at least one direct quotation and an in-text citation. So it has to be, and it has to be from one of the articles. At the last page of this, of course, is the rubric. I'm not going to read that to you, but you should look at it not only now, but before you turn in your final version of this so that you can make sure that you've met all of the requirements. Sorry, I'm getting an extra message coming in. All right, so let's go to the Word document. So this is going to be, I'm just going to call this unit seven writing assignment for right now, just because I want to um, have that on here. You're going to give me your first and last name. Let's say Jane. Oops. Oh, let's be Nancy. Why not? Nancy Smith. Um, we are going to use post-university. I'm just going to use English department because you are taking an English class. You can use your own department if you are majoring in something specific already. You can definitely use that. 
we're going to put ENG 107, the power of words. Your instructor's name is Jackie Pierce. And the due date for this assignment would be April 23rd. All right, so we are going to have three paragraphs and, oh, this will be the same title, what I call it, Unit 7 Writing Assignment. this message thing that keeps beeping at me. Okay, um, we already have one paragraph. We already have a second paragraph that has a quote in it. And so for your convenience, I'll put a third paragraph so that visually this is gonna look like what you will end up with. You may or may not go over that full second page with three paragraphs, you probably will. Um, I'm writing fake paragraphs, so of course, those tend to be a little bit shorter than real ones. Then the references page does need to be at the top. The references needs to go at the top of, oops, there we go, um, and be centered. So let's do that. That also changed the font for some reason. So that needs to be Times New Roman. Uh, uh, not, <laughs> not some weird font. Good gravy. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's insert an actual page break so this doesn't get all weird. All right. So this is one of the older articles. This is not one of the ones that you'll use for this particular assignment. So let's go ahead and go back to the module <clears throat> and pull one of the, the newer articles. So this one is, this is the one they were talking about that doesn't have a um, that doesn't have a uh, an author. This one has an author, but here are the links to both of these. So let's just, I'm just going to use this first one. Um, students and instructors, we're going to have to sign in to read it to the library, which is always a good thing. And then we're going to pull the citation from this cite button over here, and we need the APA 7th edition. Well, that's interesting because this one gives us an author. All right. Well, I mean, then we need it. Then we can use that in our in-text citation. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in my Word document. I want the um, italics to stay. So I'm going to put match formatting. Now we do have an author. So we're going to put M-O-H-N was his name or her name. And I believe it was 2021. And let's say we get it from paragraph one. So that's what that's going to look like. All right. So I'm going to say this. I am going to um, share this with you so that you can see it. Um, and that way you'll have a, a updated um, template that you can use. And this is for unit seven. So I will include that in the um, in the links for this week in the in the announcements. All right. So that's your writing assignment for this week. And let's see, was there anything else? Yes. One more thing. You will have a journal entry again this week. You are um, used to those already. So I'm not going to go too far into it. But you're gonna. What are you going to focus on? Will be write an entry that identifies and explain bias in language. What is it? How does bias create problems in communication and what steps can you take to avoid bias in language? So those are your assignments this week. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, um, especially on Tuesdays because that's my office hours, but you can always reach me by email. Um, and certainly if it's a question about the assignment as a whole, feel free to post that on the Ask the Instructor discussion board. All right, everybody, take care and have a great week seven. We'll be back next week for our very final week of class.